Do you? Do you have a total confidence within you? Yes. I believe Jesus was crucified on Calvary's cross and bore my sin. I believe he rose again from the dead. Now that is the basis of your salvation. Nothing more and nothing less. And it's a gift of God. If you believe it, you don't believe it for any other reason than God's given you the gift and the ability to believe it. And on that basis, you are saved. And on that basis alone. Now it isn't an intellectual belief, it's a heart belief. But it has to be intellectual first. And then it just goes into your heart and you think yes. I remember I was taught it when I was at school, but it was when I was 24 that someone said to me these very beautiful words they said do you know that Jesus died for you and I said yes but for the first time in my life that knowledge went from there to there and that trip is only a short distance but awfully important it went from my head to my heart and I knew now how did I know well, it was a gift from God. Do you know that he rose again from the dead? And I said, yes. Now I'd known it intellectually, but suddenly I really knew. And from that moment on, I have never, ever doubted it. I'm not saying that the devil's not tried to throw doubts in my heart. He has. And won't he to us all? He's a liar and a cheat. But I've never doubted it. And do you know on that basis I got saved? And do you know from that day on, I knew that one day Jesus was coming again to take me home to paradise to be with him. So, well, what about the things you did in between? Yeah, but I knew that God had given me the gift of salvation and I knew that God's gifts and callings are without repentance. But supposing you'd done this wrong or that wrong? Well, I knew that he was able to keep me. And that which he'd begun, he'd perfect. Well, what about all your weird problems of your personality? Well, I reckon that God knew about him when he saved me. And when he gave me the gift, he knew he'd got a hard case but he felt he could manage it. I'm sure he knew what he was taking on. And he thought, well, I'm starting and it's going to, you know, it's going to take a lot of grace, but they're sufficient, even for him. And Jesus said, yeah, Father, okay. And they popped this faith into my heart and that was that. I was on the road. Now, I was on the road and now I have to continue. And I'll go on and on and continue in it. But I mean, there's never been any doubt. I'm saved and that's that. Now, on what basis was I saved? Well, on the basis of what Christ did. By grace you saved. Totally unmerited, totally undeserved. Do you know, I didn't muster up a great belief or a great faith or a great feeling. I just believed. But I had wonderful feeling. When I believed, oh, heaven opened up. And that's that. But I did it on the same basis as that thief on the cross. I was worse than him. I did it the same way. Now, your salvation is complete. You say, well, what about my problems? Well, God knows about them. And, you know, I want to tell you something, that your problems aren't too big for him, really. People come and they think, and, and this is one of our problems. We're such funny little creatures. We're like little ants, I suppose, as God looks down and we wander around and we have these 
great ideas of how important we are and how big our problems are and we get them totally out of perspective I mean just because you have an, a little minor emotional problem uh, England hasn't gone into deep decline has it? When you get up in the morning and you feel a bit sorrowful or under the weather doesn't mean that you can have thunder and lightning all day does it? You don't affect the weather or because you get up happy you don't make it the sunshine do you? Not over here and you see you don't affect it now when you get things in perspective in God's kingdom your, your little moods and your little tantrums and your few silly mistakes and your little daft errors they, they don't affect God nor his purposes he's far bigger than you are who are you to upset him he's not looking there every minute thinking, <laughs> look at that dear old oh dear and then he frowns and goes into a mood for six weeks like you he doesn't do that and everyone else has to suffer I mean he doesn't do that doesn't even move him he's just sitting down on his throne and he's just waiting it's all planned and worked out your big problem is ever so great do you know it doesn't even concern him it doesn't move a hair on his head he knows the end from the beginning when he set his love upon you he decided you were for salvation and that was the end of it when he saved you says that which he's begun he's going to go on to perfect now nothing you can do will stop him you can make the road easy for yourself or hard which do you prefer? Hmm? the easy way I think I prefer that way but some of you seem to be gluttons for punishment think how can I make this thing difficult oh I know I'll, I'll do so and so how can I be miserable oh I know uh, and you think all these ter terrible things up and then you come along and you say I don't know whether God really loves me 